Hey guys, and welcome to this week's episode of the Unknown Gaming Podcast. I'm Tanner. We're here with Chris, and we have a special guest today, Stetson. Oh, nice welcome, to meet all y'all. <laughs> all four subscribers. I think we're I think in the we double digits than, now. Yeah, we got we're double, in the digits. double digits. We're yeah. doing it. Yeah, it's happening. This is real. Yep. Do we like people we don't even know subscribed? So that's cool. All the people we do know haven't subscribed yet, so that's not cool. Yeah. But they're a bunch Look, of jerks. Look, I subscribed. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get my check in the mail or anything. For yeah, it. it's you world. haven't unsubscribed yet. Like the Discord. Later. No, I'm still on the Discord. Yeah. I even posted something the other day. Did you? Well, yeah, I'm no gonna have to go. F- back. I'm gonna have to go look for that. You know why no one commented back? Because Discord's a waste of time. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> that was you that posted that? The picture of my board. Yeah. Yeah, that was me. Oh. I, mean, I guess I can change my name so people know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> it would help. So we've got lots of stuff happened here recently. We had the big preview this past Saturday from Games Workshop. Mm-hmm. We got new stuff coming out. Uh, I guess it's going up for pre-order tomorrow? Uh, or is it coming out tomorrow? No, it's a Dark Angel tomorrow. stuff comes out tomorrow. And some of the Space Marine stuff. Okay. It's pre-ordered tomorrow. Out next, the first weekend of Saturday, uh, Saturday of February. And then Stetson and I had a pretty good Crusade game this week. Yeah, uh, Death Card are apparently a lot better when you give them their second wound. Who would have thunk it? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it was kind of crazy. I was like, oh, they just don't fall over? That was a lot less fun. (laughs) That was a good game, though. We tied, like, straight down the middle. Oh, that was a... As tied as tied as you could be. And I think if you'd actually known the rest of your Death Guard rules, you probably would have won, because you didn't have... You didn't play with a plague company. Yeah. And you didn't know some of your stratagems. I went back and looked, and when your commander got in there, he could have done like a I, I should have just mortal, mortal wounds. wounded you to death. Yeah. And you take a mortal wound, and you get a mortal wound, and you get a mortal wound. What did you do to deserve those? Nothing. You got too close. You got yeah. too close. I mean, that's what just happens. Because. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to the Thunderdome. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's my stake. It gives mortal wounds. Yeah. It's It's... It feels weird as a sister. He's like, yeah, I just wound you on twos all the time because now you're toughness too. You're weak. Now, are you, are you digging sisters in y'all's campaigns? Oh, no, the Crusades? I, I love sisters. Or are you doing your Marines? No, no. Uh, I feel like everyone's going to be doing Marines, so I wanted to put something else out there so we can get some variety in there. Yeah. And I love some sisters. And I'm, I kind of, I'm doing Bloody Rose because they're in the kind of the Crimson Fist area of space. Mm-hmm. And like I've got... Uh, my canoness, and she's a pimp. Yep. She is straight up. So I built her with the Bloody Rose Relic, which is a plus three attack chain sword that's plus one strength, minus two AP, two damage, which is going to be minus three AP due to their trait. And uh, so she's at four attacks. She gets three. Bloody Rose gives her another one on the charge. That's eight. I gave her the Bloody Rose Relic. Re- er, command trait which gives her another attack so now she's on nine if she's near a pre she's 10 and last night she bumped up another notch i rolled randomly Mm -hmm. on the character table she's now coming in at 11 attacks that's crazy i mean you can't it's not you can't do that with a marine like anybody no i mean that's that's a lot of freaking attacks because they don't have the fire in their heart for yeah i guess (laughs) (laughs) there's no love which is why they didn't you know get this new great walker right yeah so uh oh she is an amazing walker i don't know if she's as amazing as canoness cornelia i think i named her try to make all of them have names Mm -hmm. that's what you do with crusades yeah man it's gonna be thematic well let's talk about you know talking about sisters and stuff we can talk about some of these new things that uh games workshop announced last saturday um, so if you want to pull that up on the screen there for Tanner, the people are watching on the YouTubes. <clears throat> yeah, but they got this new, um, okay, we can talk let's, about Kill Team kill first. Team. Uh, we'll talk about Kill Team first. So, uh, of course, um, get, you kind of get your guys' thoughts on, um, the new models in here. And, uh, of course, Stetson for sure is excited. And I don't know if Tanner is excited as much. Stetson's also kind of mad about it, so he can give us both sides. Well, I mean, one, it's not an... And I know not every box set's going to be even. A lot of GW box sets aren't even. But you got like 145 points of Necrons versus, I think, what did I say a second ago? Like Two, 250. 250, 265 of Marines. So, you know, totally even. Can't make it more even than that. Uh, the other thing is, and I hope, they said that they'll release the models shortly after the kill team mm-hmm. but it if should they, have just been a 40k release yeah i mean they did the same thing with the keliform 
in the kill team box that it came in, and it was like a year before you could buy the Keliform by itself. So, well, like Games Workshop time, that's shortly. That, well, shortly. I mean, <laughs> there's still stuff from the uh, um, Dark Imperium box that you can't buy outside of the Dark Imperium box that they don't make anymore. Yep. Yeah. It's like the, the captain that came in that and things uh-huh. like that. Yeah. I've got, I got I one of those the other day. I pulled it out of a box. I was like, how do you know I have I this? mean, we just got the Plague Guard characters with all that, all the new stuff last week, mm-hmm. but. Allocation's been so low, you still probably can't get one very easily. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm going to buy the box. It's yeah, the only it, place it has, you're going to get it. It has things you need. It. Yeah, yeah, it has things I need. Um, it's got to be frustrating for a Necron player because you absolutely need the Chronomancer. But everything else in that box is just a, if you're trying to complete your collection or you have a preference to it. Because Xeno like, Scum need nothing. No. <laughs> now, here's the thing, though, with the Necron players, they probably need one of these boxes, right? If you're a Marines player, you're probably trying to find two, three, four. See, yeah. I think you, you're going to buy just one because you'd only need, I mean, you're only going to need one of the captain. Mm-hmm. And in a competitive play, you may never take heavy intercessors just because of the point cost. Now I'm going to take them because I think they look cool. They have a heavy bolter. They're going to benefit Crimson Fist and Imperial right. Fist. And I think also if you're looking to actually play a full Gravis Army. Oh yeah. If you're you going to do the full If you want to do a full, then you're going to take you're going to want multiple. It just depends on what you're going to build overall. I mean, I like it in the backfield to hold your objective back there. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, you got tough. You're going to have a lot of wounds. Yeah, all the extra wounds. And you got a good range weapon on it. So, like right now, I usually use my intercessors that have the sniper rifle on them or whatever. The, mm-hmm. I can't remember the name off the top. Stalker bolt rifle. Mm-hmm. So, I think these are a solid choice to yeah. replace those. I mean, it's only 50 points more once I add the extra weapon. So yeah, I'm really excited to see them on the table. Uh, I think they're going to be a pretty good unit overall. Uh, and of course, the captain. I think you know with that the sweet bow pistol in his pose. I think he's a really cool looking model oh, as well. No, they're all good. Like even the flares. Yeah. I mean, in game, I don't know what, what role the flares are going to fill for you, but they are. They look cool. They are way prettier than they used to be. They used to be. Well, they were fine cast. So <laughs> you might not have even taken them just yeah. to avoid fine cast. They used to be trash. Yeah. <laughs> But the Chronomancer is one of the... The Chronomancer and the... Uh, what's the other one? Uh, the one that's coming out next week. Oh. Um, Pilot Fight. I've got that on my other screen. Necromancer? Uh, he's a Psychomancer. Psychomancer. Yeah. Those are those are just cool models. Yeah, they both look really cool. I mean, you know, the, the thing about what they're doing now with this the molding and stuff and the way that they're able to... You see a model on a base and old me says... That'll never stay together. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, you know, you see them because they're all like whipping and barely holding on to something. But I mean, it does, unless you like throw it against the wall because you're pissed or something. Right. You know, plastic weighs a lot less than resin and yeah. metal. Yeah, but they they used to try to do that kind of stuff um, even on pewter, and I was like, that's never gonna stay. Yeah, that's gonna fall. So the, when you get to play with that twice, and then it'll never look the same again. Even the way it places together, like even on stuff that's not like delicate, like those two models, uh, the Greater Demon of Nurgle. It's such yeah. an interesting kit because you have like one side of fat here, one blub here, and somehow it all comes together to feel the, be this ball of gross, disgusting <laughs> nonsense that's beautiful. Yep. I, I mean, compared to when we first started the game. Yeah, miniatures have come a long way. Yeah. Uh, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. All right, what we got next there, Tanner? Now we got some. There, there's stuff. a sister knight. Okay, the internet is trashing my. Beautiful princess here. <laughs> she is amazing. She's got some Gal Gadot thighs. She's, she she got her heart broke by a space marine, and she's going to show him what he's missing. She put her high heels on. She got herself a Melta, multi-Melta. She's got faith thighs to make it even better than his multi-Melta. A cool big sword. She doesn't look as dumb as a Centurion. She's got some other kind of range weapon up on her shoulders. She's here to wreck face and break hearts, and I love her. Yeah, so this is the, the Paragon War suit. What is that on her shoulders? Is, that, so is I, it a Melta? No, it's, on the shoulders, it's not a Melta, but like... It's similar. If you see the other pictures, she has some missiles up there, so I think it's going to be like there a There's going to be some options or something? Yeah, so it's got to be some option right there. Yeah, and then of course there's an option to use it with the helmet as well, so... Twin link bolters? Yeah, I'm hoping. It, 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 yeah, it may be. Uh, it, 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 I think overall, it looks like I like it. Look like it better with the helmet on. From the little video they showed, they did show yeah. it with the helmet. And I stuff. think just about everything with the helmet on better. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, Painting faces is hard. (laughs) Also, it makes sense. Okay, so I have this super cool high-tech technology that stops me from taking a bolter round to the head, but I look cooler without it. (laughs) Yeah, and I I know they kind of talked about it in that little preview. A lot of people get mad about that, and I guess they're like, yeah, there's a lot of things that are implied, like force fields over faces, and you know, (laughs) that you wouldn't realize, but when you're just putting the model on the table, it's like, wait... Why is her face exposed? That doesn't make sense. I mean, you can say the same thing for the tactical war suits. You know, they have you know the same kind of options. So, no, but I, uh, I hope she's good in game. I mean, I'm probably going to run her anyway. Like, no matter what, she's going to be in my <laughs> sister's. She'll definitely be in my crusade force. Yeah, I, I think she's. I think overall, it's a pretty cool model. I think it's you know as soon as I saw it, I went straight to you know the Grey Knight model. Um, I, I think it's pretty cool. It'll be kind of cool to see it on the table as well. well so I'm, it's cool to see the sisters getting more and more of these kind of. Space Marine add-ons, you know, the same thing. They're trying to make it, so I feel, I feel like they'll probably make a bike squad at some point in the future, uh, or cavalry, something, you know. Yeah. Um, and then they'll probably have, um, of course, a flyer at some point as well, I would yeah. believe. I'm so. not a fan of, of any of the baby carriers outside of the Scout Dreadnought. Yeah. Just because, like, a pilot should be fully enclosed. You don't have little baby arms dangling out okay, there. Okay, towel lover. Towel <laughs> sympathizer over here needing all of their guys fully enclosed. We're real men and women in the Imperium. Yeah, did you see the baby, <laughs> you see the baby carrier meme where the Imperial Guard yeah. is still a little baby? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. All right, what we got next, Tanner? Ooh, the, the Titanicus? Yeah, this new is Titan. the new War Master Titan uh, for the Titanicus game, so... Um, what do you guys would've thoughts been, on this? I think it looks really cool. Uh, I think it would be a lot cooler if it was for a full size Forge World. Uh, yeah, it, and I I definitely hear that. But as far as for this game goes, I mean, he looks. I don't play like games that to... aren't thirty two millimeter. <laughs> uh, he looks like he's going to beat somebody up pretty badly. Uh, Everything smaller than thirty two millimeters garbage. He really doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's the wrong size Titan that we all wanted. Yeah. Uh, where's my church? Yeah. I, like, I hear all that, yeah. but I think it's still pretty cool. Oh, no. Model. His guns are cool as heck. I just, I feel like he's got a crew cut up there at the top where something else needs to be. Yeah. I do kind of like the, uh, he's got more of a knight head than a Titan head. I thought that was pretty cool. Hmm. He looks a lot more like an Imperial Knight. I love the look of those plasma gun arms what, or whatever they are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those are, uh, He's gonna wreck somebody's face, and, and the, the the cool thing they pointed out, which I didn't even realize at first, of course, he's got armpit missiles, and then he's got like a last cannon or something coming out of his kneecap. Yeah, uh, which or, that immediately made me think of like Boba Fett. It's like armpit missiles. Is that the equivalent of a giant robot that doesn't shave? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is it? Uh, that all real monsters cartoon, the stink monster. <laughs> oh man, that was a good show. <laughs> Yeah, he's got armpit, armpit for weapons. <laughs> uh, and of course, they uh, brought out a new book, uh, the new Loyalist book that's going to have different rules for that as well. Um, so uh, be, we haven't really gotten into Titan- Titanicus locally, but uh, I mean, we you know have it's a little bit of knowledge. Asshole. Yeah, <laughs> I think you, both of you guys have some different uh, uh, of these different guys and things like that as well. So well, I screwed up on mine. So I played Imperial Fist for like thirty k. And I was like, oh, here's some Titans who are yellow. They'll definitely be for the Imperium. They are not. Yeah. <laughs> they are for Horus. Yeah. So You traitor. Well, you know, <laughs> sometimes you like the Emperor, sometimes you're tired of it. Yep. <laughs> uh, all right, what do we got on there next there? All right, so there's the, yeah, there's there's the new rules, the yeah. new books. Uh, and, of course, they said there will be another book following it pretty soon with more probably chaos rules, things like that. So. Um, we got some new stuff for the new elves. Yep, so this is uh, Age of Sigmar stuff. Uh, this is the... Um, Lumineth. Lumineth the, Realm the, Lords. Um, this is the Wind Spirit. Yep. Lord of the seven, Seventh Wind. So, like, this is a good example of what I was talking about earlier. Like, old, old me would look at this model and go, that's... That's going to break in two seconds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to get caught on your shirt. Yeah. You're going to throw it across the room. But they're, they're, everything's so light, and with, you know, especially with plastic glue, whatever you guys are using, and it creates that weld on there. Yeah. I mean, it literally is just fusing it all into one big model. So, I mean, it's a really crazy model. I could never see myself, I mean, maybe eventually if I got good enough at painting, but that looks intimidating. I paint. bet it's not as hard as you think. Like, because most of your eye is going to be focused in on those tails that are falling down, and mm-hmm. those are actually going to be relatively easy to paint. Yeah. So, I mean, because you could use some of the new effect paint to get a really cool glow effect on those. And like, my rule is With little effort. You want the, your model to look good at six feet because that's what you're mm-hmm. going to see it at yeah. the table. So like, yeah, don't worry about it too much on the up close stuff. Yeah. Well, and you don't want to be playing with display quality models either because you're just going to tear them up. Yeah. You know. So, 
I think, I mean, I don't like elves. I've talked about my racist hatred of all elves in all games. But that is a pretty cool looking elf model. Like, I love the bow. I love the, what is it, the cat of nine tails for magic? I might be thinking of the wrong card, but yeah, getting it, some serious vibes there. Well, and, and you know, as far as it doesn't really look like an elf. Yeah. Yeah, it's well, fox, it's, it's antelope. It's spirit. It's, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's all these different looking things. So, I mean, it is a really cool model. They did a really good job with this one. It's cool to see what they keep coming up with over there. Yeah. Um, we got the the book. Yep, the new book. Um, this is the new storyline. Funny that they're part of the Broken Realms. Yeah. Th- okay, this is just a novel. There's no rules. No, no, no. no, no, no it there's is rules. There's like a... so they had the... they just had their book. They don't need new rules. So yeah, the Broken Realms is going to start having these. You know, as they're bringing out the more and more army stuff and kind of making them bigger and bigger, they're going to keep doing these Broken Realms expansion things. Okay. So, yeah. So this is this one here. Um, uh, the Daughters of Cain. New book. Yep. Yeah. Uh, of course, we the Games Workshop announced a lot of this stuff last month, uh, beginning of this month. Yep. Uh, the endless spells for Daughters of Cain. Yeah, these are pretty cool. I all do made love out of the blood endless, and stuff. Like all of the endless spells, it's just the, it's a neat dynamic. I don't uh-huh. know if you could put it into 40k. I don't think it would work in 40k as well. Yeah, it's kind of like the buildings from Age of Sigmar to. 40k, like in Age of Sigmar, your buildings are free, so well, why wouldn't I build it? But in 40k, your table terrain is usually so crowded that it's hard to get a building in. Like right. They, they look cool, and like I buy some of the pieces just for terrain look, but mm-hmm. playing them in-game is Yeah, it doesn't rough. make a whole lot of sense, especially because a lot of times, like, point value, you're like, do I want that? Like, so some of the ones that are decent point value, like the Sisters one's 50 points, and it's pretty good, but it's massive, and I have to have a certain distance away from every other terrain piece. Mm-hmm. In some tables, I'm just not going to be able to put my. I mean, it's piece. even hard just to play the uh, the big fortress, not alone the terrain piece. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we're in a game where you need to one be mobile and two hold objectives, and a terrain piece is neither of those. It's like when they brought out terrain pieces in War Machine. I just like, what's the point? The game, any game, is almost about mobility and getting to objectives. And when you don't have that ability, I don't want to put points into you when I can put points into something else. And yeah. I, would, I would say that the, the more board. fantasy style stuff is the one exception. Like you're eventually all going to just meet in the middle and fight. Yeah, anyway. you're going to be stuck there forever. Right. Like, it's part of my complaint with some fantasy games is they kind of get jumbled and it's hard to keep track of. Mm-hmm. Whereas 40K, you're everywhere. Especially like my favorite way of playing was with the cards. And you, you know, you have to be prepared to move to any part of the board because you don't know which objective you're going to draw. Yeah, I loved multi ball. Multi ball is fun. Like if you were a good player and you were playing a new player, play you could play multi ball, and the new player might win just because of where they were on the board. Yeah, yeah. it was more random. Like for tournament play, hated it because mm-hmm. I might lose because you drew better cards. Right. Which lose? I'm already got the odds of my losing because maybe the dice turned on me. Not really a legitimate excuse. I mean, I use it all the time. Yeah. every gamer does. I've seen it. I've seen it happen my way, your Look way. Look here. The we, only we've way we've both you had it that. happen. <laughs> yeah, we've both had the dice turn on us, and, and we're like, yeah, we're just this game's over. <laughs> I'm gonna put my stuff up and go home. Uh, but. I, w- I loved multi ball for a friendly game. I was kind of sad when they took that out. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong, I love Ninth Edition. Which I mean, we've gone back and played a couple, a uh, couple Maelstrom games since Ninth has come out, just because it's fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, what okay. we got on there next here? So yeah, okay, uh, Dark we're Angels. Going to Dark Angels here. Probably the best combat patrol box next to maybe Blood Angels for any Marine player, because. One, you can't get a hold of Redemptor anywhere, and now suddenly you can. Yeah, yeah. I think the big reason that, uh, I think because their production's been so slow, they know these boxes are coming up. So if you see something sold out, I think you're that's probably coming up in a box, because uh, I think they're just basically pulling those, all the production line for those, they're putting them in these boxes, uh, like the emulator, you couldn't get it. Yeah. Or the Impulsor, I mean, sorry, for ever, because it was in the, now it's in the yeah. Blood Angels box, you know, so I think that's in the Tactical War suit forever, you couldn't get it. Now I'm able to start ordering it, but I couldn't because it was in the Space Wolves box, so I think they're just kind of slowly pulling all their stock and sticking them in these boxes. Now the other thing they could be doing is like, hey, we have the stock, but we're going to put this in a box, and then they're going to spend this much money because you can't get it any other way. So, but I think it's a great box set. Yeah, uh, otherwise, like, if you're buying that, you're not going to want more than two because you're not going to want two chaplains so unless you can trade it or convert it, which mm-hmm. you might be able to. The chaplain, a little less on the conversion, the librarian you can do a little bit more with out of the uh, the Blood Angel Box. Blood Angel Box. Yep. But 
you're going to use all the models in both of those boxes for at least if you buy one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the deal's still, you're still saving money even if you bought two because what's a redemptor? $60, you're looking at $50 for the uh, Inceptors. I think they're 60 60 so I think everything in there is 60 except for the chaplain. Oh, and the intercessors because that's only half the squad, so we'll say 30. Yeah, so yeah. You're, you're 150 just for those in the box, 140. So even if you're not using the chaplain, you're saving ten dollars. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, there's no reason. Yeah, it's a, it's a great purchase. GW's really doing a good job with these, these boxes so far that I've seen. Um, of course, I'm thinking you know, a lot of people are. And then also you get the Dark Angel upgrades in there as well. Yeah. Those are $15 each. And you're going to get probably two of them? Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's a good deal. So. Like, and the Blood Angel one, which was, what, an Impulsor at 75 mm -hmm. uh, five Infiltrators, five uh, Intercessors, so there's 60 so that's 135 for and the library. And then you get the Librarian. Was that all you got, or did you get some uh, Aggressors? In there's Aggressors one? in that one as well. So you're almost getting an Aggressors for, for free and a Librarian. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a pretty good box. Um, I like this one a lot. They did a pretty good job with it. Of course, the Chaplain you can get solo as well, but um, it's it's. I think as far as the Chaplain models that they currently have, if you're going to pick one for Dark Angels, that's that's the one you pick there. Really? I think you just pick the one on the bike no matter who you are. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, talking about what, what you're going to build when you actually get your Dark Angels army. But if you're playing any uh, any Marine faction, this is a great box. Yeah. And Chaplains are good. Like, but that's the hard part I have building Marine list right now. It's like, because I usually don't have the points to do multiple detachments. And if I do, I'm going to spend some command points just to get like one guy. But I'm, I'm always torn between a captain, a chaplain, a tech Marine, and a librarian. Like, which of those three? Like, I don't even, lieutenants are good. And I don't even consider them right now because I have a hard time getting them in. Well, and with your, you know, running the dreadnoughts, you definitely want to have the tech Marine. So that's hard not to want to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, and you're getting rerolls on your your hits with your with your captain. So you, you know, I mean, you're getting one already or something. And then well, he can I guess he it, has his own rules that you throw in there. It depends on what you're focused as far as filling out the rest of your army, since uh, core rules are a thing now. Do and, you need the yeah. rerolls or do you need something else? Yep. And uh, I mean, all of those models are now sexy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, it's a little weird when you talk about inanimate objects being sexy, but they're sexy. Well, I mean, for what they do, yeah. I mean, it's just it all looks so freaking cool. Like yeah. the tech marine. Of all of those, I think is my favorite looking one. Mm -hmm. It's got a cool bolter weapon, a servo arm, cool sword, big, and not fine cast. Mm -hmm. That's a big plus. Because <laughs> yeah. the other one is a fine cast mess. I remember Darren cursing for hours before, uh, what was it, the big tournaments that 2,500 points were just be as deadly as you can. The, the Ard Boys? Ard Boys. Yeah. Cursing for hours to get this built before yeah. the game. And I, I think that like he's still... like. He's gotten a whole lot of new stuff, and he hasn't put in really any of the new stuff together. He put more de more Tyrion together, but outside of that, he's like, I don't want to put anything together. And I think it's because he still is like. And then he goes and buys a bunch of Forge World. Yeah, well, stuff. I, I already <laughs> said who's putting that together. He looked at me and he said, you. Oh, oh okay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, so. That's gonna be fun. So is that when you look at Tanner, be like, Tanner, I got a new project for you. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I you think some of that stuff is gonna be really cool to put together, so I would I don't actually mind it. So no, no, just make him make it a podcast. Today yeah. we're putting together the Thunder Rock. You know, <laughs> there might be there might be some of that where we kind of stream some some of that stuff live and we'll do some of that. So that is some some things. We'll be unboxing them for sure. Mm -hmm. Um I've never been inside of a Ford World box or anything like that, so it'd be kinda cool to see that uh, for the first time. My Warlord Titan came in three of the big like as big as the Blood Bowl mm -hmm. Necromunda box came in three of those. Yeah. yeah, my Stormbird was in two. Yeah, well, these boxes we got are pretty pretty good size, so um, it'd be interesting to see. And then we got a lot of the Primarchs and stuff like that while we were down there as well. So, um, all right, what do we got next on here? Dark uh, so Angels the, book, the new Codex. Um, it's full of trash. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, it's a good trader book. <laughs> I mean, they haven't. They've got Death Guard, so they needed another de trader. So yep. I mean, that's fair. Yeah, they've got that secret. It's funny. The guy that plays the Dark Angels, he's really sad that he he had to had an appointment because none of us really care so much about him. But um, he just left. So yeah, Brandon, this is his thing. He would have loved to have been able to talk about this and defend his traders, <laughs> um, but he's not here for it. Uh, but um, yeah, it's really cool to see the Dark Angels coming in. Uh, of course, the Blood Angels. Um, if you've played for a really long time, you know, the second edition, these guys were actually in the same codex together when they first were launched. Um, you know, I honestly so. was expecting Dark Angels or Space Wolves to be later in the edition and get a Primarch out of them. Because we need a Primarch? Because no. we need... Yeah. Uh, I mean, 
I think that they're just, I mean, eventually they're going to have to get to the point where they're, they want to get all the scale, you know, to the right size. And I think they're waiting on that for some of this stuff. Like, I'm hoping for the lion over the wolf because. I kind of am too. I would prefer the lion. I could also see, uh, apparently the con's super popular, but I I don't know if he's more popular than the lion or the wolf. Uh, White scars aren't going to have as big a following as dark angels or the wolf. So it's got to be one of those. You can't bring back Sanguinus. I say that. They G- will. That's <laughs> that's who they're going to bring back. GW, we can do whatever we want. Whatever <laughs> we want. Yeah. With um, whoever we want. <laughs> they'll bring back Ferris Manus if they want to. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Still. <laughs> yeah. Here's the emperor on the table. Wait, what? He can move. <laughs> he's, he's, the tra- he's the he's the custodian's terrain piece. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, that would be actually pretty epic. <laughs> he's oh. just kind of rolling behind. I, mean, I don't think dark angels are actually traitors. I just I love trolling people. Yeah. yeah. And they get no, no, no. They definitely we're we're all good. We're we're all good here, Captain. <laughs> yeah. We didn't do anything. Oh, I didn't know that guy last week that's over there on the chaos side. I, I don't know who that guy is. Bob, are you sure about this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so of course they got the new Dark Angel Codex, uh, all the new uh, Crusade rules in there, and then of course the new data cards also came out with that. So, uh, And then we have one of the things I think I've been very much anticipating, uh, the new Storm Speeder. I mean, this these things are freaking awesome. I am happy for it. I, I don't, I'm going to have a hard time putting it in... Finding a, finding a place to put it, but I think I think Imperial Fist and Crimson Fist have an interesting place for it because our super doctrine is only on the first turn. Mm-hmm. With the new terrain rules, it's relatively easy to hide some tanks. So now Ooh. I have a way to move real quick. Turn one, get that line of sight, get those shot off. Now it's going to die quick, yeah. But if you have a plan for it, um, it's going to do well. I mean, Dark Angels one are obviously uh, Raven Wing will have a use for it, yeah. You'll have a use for it. Yeah. Uh, white scars will have a use for it. When I say you, blood angels. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that it, you know it's one of those things. You know, like I said, you know it's going to die, but if it gets up and destroys what you need to destroy, so that you have a tackle advantage the rest of the game, it's done its job. It, yeah, I just needed to annoy my opponent, enough, yep. and then they're shooting at it that turn. Yeah. So it's like a. But if you've got this multi metal flying around, and then you got the other multi metals you got driving around, and you know walking around, and they're worried about that and not the other ones. Because. You still got other multi melts. <laughs> it might buy a turn for your uh, eradicators to get there. Yeah. Because, I mean, they're not going to be necessarily right up in range. And it looks cool. Yeah. Just the only complaint I have about the model is the little, and I'm going to find a way to probably to get mine out, is the little guy in the turret at the back. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he, there's no reason for him. Uh, just, you can have the missiles there and just have the two pilots. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the the way they're saying, you know, one pilot's taking care of that handgun, you know, right in front of yeah. him. So they were like, well, we got to have somebody else doing the top one. But I think you could have still just done that in closed. I mean, you could have assumed that the other gun was inside or something. What's the yeah. Winnebago on wings? Uh, Storm Raven? Yeah. Storm Raven has <laughs> a assault cannon up there with, uh, I think, a servitor running it. It, sh- it shouldn't be a Marine. A servitor at best. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, you know, as far as the Primera stuff goes, they don't really... They don't have anything like that servitor wise, right? Nothing's being manned by a servitor. It's all. Oh, I never. I don't think I noticed that. It's all Primaris Marines. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't noticed them uh, lore wise because I mean you don't see it in the Space Marine stuff a ton, mm-hmm. uh, but even the Rhinos are driven by servitors in a lot of cases. Yeah, maybe they're trying to make it less grim dark to get kids involved. <laughs> they are putting it in a lot of those books. I'm like, <laughs> so let kinda... me pay your family's debts. Get in that tank for the rest of your life. <laughs> okay, you can't get out. Sorry, we'll fix that. <laughs> Did you need that leg? Yeah, you do. You need that leg to stay connected to that pedal for the forever. <laughs> Look, all of our <laughs> all of our stuff is driven by zombie computers. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I, uh, favorite load out there for you? Uh, I mean, obviously the multi melt. Yep. melt like there's a, I think there is a place for the last cannon one. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know the names off the top of my head. I guess I can look it up. I have a phone. I have the technology. Uh, let's see if it shows me here though. Uh, let's see. You got the Hell Strike, which is going to be your anti infantry. Uh, the Hammer Strike, which is the melty version. <laughs> And the Thunder Strike, which is going to be your uh, last cannon version. So I think two of those have a place, and you can put them in. I think the multi melta one's going to have the probably see that more often. See more. The Hell Strike one just confuses me because I don't know. I think it has like maybe four more shots than the ATV, but the ATV is eighty points versus I think it's one 
sixty one seventy for the Hill Strike, and I'm like, well, I'm just I can take two ATVs then. Yeah, yeah, and then you're, you're getting eight wound ATVs. Toughness is probably similar. Yeah, and you get a better weapon. I yeah. mean, because they have it. It would be better, but they if they put the heavy onslaught Gatling gun, but it's just the light onslaught Gatling gun. Does yeah, the so you're, same not on that, the you're not getting that extra plus in first turn on the on the AP things like oh, that. No, you get well. the. AP, but you only get eight shots at strength five. Well, I can still get that on the ATV. Yeah, I got you. So I just, I don't know. If if someone has a plan for it, please comment below. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. All right, what we got next year? All right, so the Blade Guard veterans. We talked about these a little bit last week, kind of because again, the Dark Angel guy was mad that they were painted in Dark Angel colors and they're not Terminators or the Deathwing colors. Yeah. <laughs> But we kind of talked him off a ledge there. Uh, but again, I think this multi-part kit is great. It is amazing. Even if you don't want to run them, you have so many bits to convert captains, chaplains, mm-hmm. yeah. librarians. You can make anything you want. Or you can run them as plate guard, which are actually really good. Actually well, really good. And like you have yeah. all these really kind of like nighty bits. So like yeah. Dark Angels, Convert Away. Black Templar. Black Templar. Yeah. That's oh. what I'm going to do is Black Templar with them. Yeah, cool. they look great. I mean, I love the multi-part kit. I love the new the new poses, the shield on the back. You know, I think it's I think it's really cool. Like, I would have liked the only thing I would have liked, and it's a minor complaint, is different weapon options for the melee weapon. Swords are cool. Yeah, power fists. And that's like that's that. one thing that we've been lacking primaries wise overall is weapon out options. Yes, yeah. I'm like, and then. You yeah, thought they you... fixed it when they put it in for the? I'm sorry. No, I was gonna say like yeah. one of those one of those examples is Death Company. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you well, can like, load out Death Company first gen way better than you can Primaris. Right. And, but just like captains, like I want to convert a really cool captain, but what's the point? I can't take any of the weapons. Yeah. You so, know, and I don't want to. I don't want to proxy all the time. You know. Yeah. And so now we're doing, and a lot of people are doing. Like, you play it as firstborn, but you're you're using, using primaries. primaries models. Yeah. yeah, and they look cool. Like yeah. A, Built a captain with the fist on it, mm-hmm. got him painted. I, I love how he came out. Yeah, I think overall, if I mean, if you're because I mean, the wounds are all the same. I mean, really, it's just you're saying they're. It's not really that much different, yeah, right? It's like an attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's just you're you're when you're playing the game, you're saying I'm yeah I'm losing that one thing. But you want your army to look all the same. Yeah, it, yeah. And we were when we went down to this bunker this last week in Dallas, and we saw some of the second generation stuff. I mean, the second edition stuff. That they have displayed there. Yeah. I was like, wow, I forgot how tiny all this was. Like the little predators and the oh, little rhinos. They were so short. Yeah, and I, I remember playing with that stuff and I was like, man, that's crazy. I mean, even just the uh, the dreadnoughts from a dreadnought to yes. a redemptor, it's yes. huge. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, they had the like, I remember those stupid predators and they had the metal pure, pure, Sponsons on the side that you had to glue to plastic and hope it, and that, you know that's one of those things. I got to play with that twice before it didn't look that good anymore. You know, I did the uh, old uh, Razorback where it had, which I like the old Razorback where you had the guy behind the turret, mm-hmm. which uh, I know I just complained about that a second ago. <laughs> it made more sense here. <laughs> it made more sense here, but it was the, it was an all metal piece. You had. And it was the worst. Yep. It was the absolute worst. Yeah. yeah, thank God models have been able like, to come so far. <laughs> you've seen like on Bell Lost Souls when they show the original Thunderhawk. Yep. Which was all metal. I'm like, I just look at it and I have m- my fingers hurt from the glue that they yes, get That was my yes. one of my biggest complaints is like, ow, ow. ow. <laughs> or you had, if you had, we were wearing denim that day and you went like that, oh, my leg just burned, you know, yeah. like <laughs> well, chemical like, burns. Um, I know when I first was putting together metal models, I wouldn't do it if I didn't have some sort of glue that had an activator. Yeah. Like, no, I'm not going to sit there and like that. Yeah. All of the war machine. So uh-huh. I would prime it and use an activator just to find some way and then, to stick. And then you get uh, glue and activator on your hand at the same time and end up with second degree burns. Yeah. <laughs> it's not safe. It's Children, you ask a parent. <laughs> <laughs> or don't. That'll be a fun story later in your life. Uh, all right. What do we got on here? So they got the eradicators next, right? Yeah. Yep. All right. So these, uh, of course, we've already had the eradicators out in some shape uh, uh, since the uh, Indominus box came out, but now we are getting uh, the heavy melt on there, which I think we've kind of you've you've kind of proxied a couple times. Yeah. I mean, and I, I feel bad. I think when someone asked me on the forum, I'm like, I said, unless you're Imperial Fist, I think the regular one's better. But no, like Ultramarines are going to want the regular because they can walk without penalty yeah. for two of the turns. 
it's got the it's got the it gives you the plus two damage plus four if you get within half range so great if you're playing death guard now that yeah. you take losing that minus one or taking on dreadnoughts yeah i mean it the five point increase was needed and honestly i said that it needed a 10 point increase to justify how good it is yeah because even now it's a little more balanced but i mean they're so now question because i haven't really looked at it because i haven't thought about it until just now do you still get an extra attack even for that one yeah so it's still two shots so but it's two shots by itself do you get an extra attack for shooting at it like you uh, do with the regular? I it one shot. No, so there's the multi-melta that's two-shot, two and yeah. you'll get the extra. So you'll fire four shots with the multi-melta, and you'll fire two shots with each of the heavy melta rifles. See, that's just nasty. But you can put the multi-melta one even in your regular eradicators, the yeah. one that came in the box set. So, yeah. I mean, I'm buying two boxes to build me two multi-meltas and get me four long rifles so I have options. Yeah. Uh, it's a great kit. Uh, again, this is since it came to the game, immediately was dominating the board. So one of my so. favorite things, because like, when the Night King came out, I was like, how do I kill that thing in one turn? And then I realized I could do it. So with if you can get a unit in range of the Night King and your Crimson Fist, because the Night King has certain keywords. Yeah, you can, stupid keywords. So you can use the Imperial Fist stratagem. It pays to, I pick a unit, I pick a vehicle, I get plus one to wound. Then there's the Crimson Fist stratagem that's, I pick a character, I get plus one to hit. Since he's both a character and a vehicle, I'm going to be hitting on twos, wounding on twos, with, I assume I'm going to have a captain in the scenario where I'm right there. It would be I interesting to see an Imperial First person not take, or Crimson Fist, either one, take, not go with a captain. Yeah, I, I don't know why you would, especially since you can get a hold of a... Sh- a relic that makes them a lieutenant as well, yeah. or gives them the lieutenant rules. It, it's for I don't. I think I built one list without a captain. Uh, but the chance of, let's say you miss a roll and then you re-roll that, that becomes a six. Yeah. I mean, you're just you're you're giving yourself so many options there. So, so I mean, it's kind of hard not to. There was a point where people would just take the full rerolls, just to re-roll everything to try to get sixes because mm-hmm. I think the numbers came out a little bit more in your favor. Yeah. Yeah, but it. I know every time it happens and I see it, I'm like. <laughs> Until you get into combat with me, you're like, "Welcome to the Thunderdome." I've yeah, nine hundred thousand attacks per this game's regular. Looking dude. really, really bleak. Oh, it's third turn. My time. <laughs> Let's see what else we got. All right, so uh, yeah, this is the new Psychomancer. What do you think about that, Tanner? I mean, uh, Xeno Scum. I mean, uh, outside of your lore hate, what do you think about that model? It's cool. I mean, all the Necron <laughs> stuff is cool. I'm not. Out of all the Xeno stuff, Necrons is probably my least favorite. Um, but all right. the new models is are it cool. fluff wise or mini wise? Mini wise, I just don't like robots. Well, I like other Robo kinds of robots. Hater. He likes the like, Imperial <laughs> robots. I like the, the half man robots. I like the boxy Tau Gundam style robots. Oh yeah, yeah, and the ones that wear red capes from Mars. You heard yeah. it here. You and the ones like that wear socialist robots. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need. We need um, we need a bunch of Tau stuff with the Bernie meme. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be on the lookout for we'll start, a Bernie cover from Unknown Comics. Also, just, start just throwing that out on, there. Mittens it's on all the Tau. Yeah, <laughs> all Tau. Wouldn't that be funny if somebody actually? Because you could probably make it look like that. Yeah, <laughs> um, some green <laughs> stuff. <laughs> oh, you could just paint it that way. <laughs> I mean, it's got enough little sections in their hands. You could probably just paint it. That would be pretty funny, actually, if somebody. Somebody get on that. So, rules-wise on this guy, I have a hard time with him because uh, I think a lot of his abilities are like 12 inches, so you got to kind of get him up there. Mm-hmm. He's not immediately benefiting another unit. I mean, he has some abilities that benefit him, but just not like the Chronomancer or the Technomancer. So, he's still better than the one that came in the box set, uh, something, something, Mancer. Don't worry, you don't need to know the name. Yeah. You'll never see him. If it's a Necron, just remember Destroyer, Nancer, and you're pretty much you're, good. You're in. Yeah. <laughs> what do I need to hit with a Marine? Three plus. What do you need to know the name of? Nancer. Yeah. <laughs> that guy. Uh, but like, as far as minis go, like the digital skull, the two arms, the staff, the baby legs. Yeah. I mean, he's like he's like a little bug on the bottom side there, you know. But he's he's pretty cool looking, I think, overall. And I like the fact that it looks like something's digitizing in front of him. Um, I mean, it's 
it's beautiful. Yeah, it's a really cool model. I like this one a lot. They showed this one off like a long time ago, I felt like, right? When they were first kind of launching the Indomitus stuff. And yeah. Then, like we never saw anything from it again. Him and the Chrono I hate Rancer. when they do that. They do that all the time. Yeah. So I mean, it's been kind of like, and I actually kind of forgot about it until they just, oh, here, look at this. And I was like, oh man, that's that's still just as cool as the first time I saw it. You like, know? I'm going to buy one. I don't know if I'll put it in my neck, how many times I'll put it in a Necron army, but... Cool. Yeah, I mean, he's cool looking, and I'm, I'm kind of curious exactly how tall he's gonna stand, because he looks like he's kind of he's pretty elevated. So we'll see when we get one in hand. Let's we'll see what else we got here. Um, this is uh, it's just the Dire Chasm. Yeah, this is the um, Warhammer Under- Underworld. The, the new Ravagers okay. coming out for uh, Warhammer Underworlds. Of course, um, you know you can use this stuff in Age of Sigmar as well. And those are cool models. Yeah. Like I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the game because I don't like the card mechanic. Like I, I played it. It's sometimes fun. Sometimes it just wears me down. It is a quick game. Mm-hmm. If you don't have a lot of time or you don't have a lot of money, it is a great game to get into just from that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and then they had they also really, in that Saturday announced the new counts, the vampire counts. Yeah. I don't know if I have a picture of that up. Uh, but these models, uh, the Crimson Court, I think they look the, the, freaking epic. The new the, vampire models, the gargoyle with the mace. Oh, that's, I, I, I have to have that guy. Just that is. Well, Tanner's just. We cool. didn't have him. I was looking for. Yeah, the I don't think we had. A, I don't think we had a, a a picture of those. But the Crimson Court looks really, really cool. Of course, also they announced the Cursed City, the new quest quest game, and we don't have any you pictures mean, of that up here either. But. You mean the not Battlefleet Gothic? Yeah, not Battlefleet Gothic, which we had hoped it would be. Um, but uh, minis are cool. Yeah, it's not Battlefleet Gothic. Yeah, it, it, yeah. I think it, maybe if they'd seen more, um, you know, uptick in their uh, their other flying game already, then maybe we'd see that. But I don't know. Oh, that's because their other flying game isn't to scale and looks dumb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Titanicus to scale flying game. Here's a bomber. It's the same size as your fighters. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> shouldn't it be a little bit different? You know, it would be cooler if it was Battlefleet Gothic. Yep, I, I think it, they would see a pretty good uptick if they did do that. So, I mean, I'm all in. Like GW, if for some reason one of you is listening, I got five hundred dollars today <laughs> to blow on everything Battlefleet Gothic. Yep. Not to mention updates. I'm in. Yep, it, I think it'd be money. pretty cool. Uh, of course, we're getting the second book of the. Uh, uh, the Dawn uh, series, The Gate of Fire, but The Gate of Bones, oh, yeah, so yeah. a Dawn of Fire novel. So we're getting the second book of that coming out, uh, which I know Tanner's super excited yeah. about. Yeah, you got that down for me, right? Uh, who? Yeah, I've got yeah. a couple coming. Yeah, you so I didn't order Stetson one because he likes the fancy ones. It looks so. cool on the bookshelf. <laughs> it's leather. <laughs> so, but there is an extra one coming as well, so I've got a couple of those coming. Also, so. I can flex on the other ner- nerds. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes, you read it, but did you read the Leather Deluxe version? <laughs> I don't have time to sit on the website and try and get a copy of the Leather Deluxe version. Of course you don't. Because they sell out. Peasant. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what do we got next here? Uh, we've got a new Blood Bowl character. Yeah, so these are we've got two new Blood Bowl characters from Forge World. Um, I think they both look cool. Of course, we're all kind of getting into Blood Bowl right now, so uh, cool to see more and more stuff coming out from these. Hopefully, um, we'll be showing a battle report of that eventually when some of us get this painted. Eventually, up. My, yeah, my, my stuff, stuff is painted. My okay? stuff's getting painted currently. I'm not sure if he's painted, I'm Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I don't have the time to sit there and get the good copy of the book because <laughs> I'm painting all my stuff. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, really excited. These both look really cool. Um, I, I, I don't know when I, when I, I don't play either of these Blood Bowl minions, so I don't think I would need either of them, but they I look got really, death. really I epic. I got the Death Lady. Well, well the, you can play both. The dwarf is a, is a zombie. He plays he? for undead. Like, All he's right. holding a zombie arm that's holding a football to throw the football. I mean, Tom Brady might be doing that in five years. <laughs> <laughs> and still effective. And still effective, because <laughs> the refs work for Tom Brady. Yeah. Uh, As I, the Atlanta team. Yeah. How, how do you feel about that game still? Um, you know, it happened. <laughs> yeah. And now it happens twice a year. <laughs> so we already kind of talked about the Death Guard stuff. Yeah, go ahead and ta- tell us your uh, your new thoughts kind of on that, though. So just overall, your feel on the army and things. It w- I've gotten one game in with it. And like, like I said, I haven't read all the rules yet. It's been a crazy week. I just kind of winged it. But even just winging it, it was a good game. It was a lot better than the past, probably all of ninth edition that yeah. I played with them. I like that. 
So it's going to be hard building any list, not putting Mortarian in, because I watched one video on how hard it is to kill him. Like if you if he has Miasma Pestilence on him, mm -hmm. and he has the one Warlord trait from I think it's the third Plague Company. I can't remember its name. Where it, you can't reroll hits or wounds within his aura, which will be nine inches, can be made twelve inches. Yeah, it just keeps going as the game goes. Like it takes. 14 multi meltas from a retributor squad of sisters. Like the best was Magnus, and you gave Magnus every upgrade, and you cast Hex Blast, and you still can only do 14 wounds to him. Like your best strategy to deal with Mortarian in a big game is to not deal with Mortarian. Yeah, to avoid that's kind of what my thought, right? He's 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 on there to be a big distraction, but you really don't want to focus on him. Like just kill the rest of the army. Like yeah. the rest of. The whole army is about speed five, except mm -hmm. for Mortarian, and except for what's the drone that flies? The bloat drone. The no. bloat drone, which finally my favorite kit for the bloat drone because I had the flesh mowers because it's a flesh mower. <laughs> what do you not love about that name? Demon <laughs> Demon princes are still relatively fast, yeah. uh, but Mortarian on he's a, he's a combat. Heavy. I mean, yeah. he he can cast spells, but his gun's not fantastic. It's range twelve now. So I think it actually was range eighteen. I think it so. Was. You could, in theory, just outrun him. You know, well, that's probably your best bet. Uh, or let him kill five units a game. Okay, cool. You got five units. You can kill a game. I'm gonna send the rest of my army to kill all your objective securing stuff. Mm -hmm. now, did you take Mortarian in this game that you guys played? Uh, we played a we only played a fifty. Oh yeah, you guys man. are doing uh, the Crusade. So yeah, yeah, that's, yeah he's not in there. I yeah. mean, you could put him in a thousand points, and in a thousand point game, he'd be scary because you're playing on a uh, twenty two. It's a little bitty board. Yeah, so, like he you, is the board. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't matter how slow you are in those games. Yeah. You don't outrun anything. Yeah. You can't outmaneuver yeah. something. You can't flank real well without well, a stratagem. And so you can it's, even with the Death Guard with their the way their new disgusting resilience works and having two wounds, it's still going to take you some time to go kill all the other objective securing stuff. I mean, yeah, they're pretty, pretty stout. That board says we're going to get in each other's faces. Like I... my plan for the army I'm planning on building now is I'm going to take Typhus and a Terminator Sorcerer, fill out as many Terminators as points allow, and uh, then just fill out my battle line with Box Walkers. I think it'll be solid with mm -hmm. Typhus there, with the stratagem. Like, you're obviously going to do the Harbingers, I think is the correct. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's the right one. And then you're going to have a stratagem where you can reroll all hits with a Poxwalker unit. Then you have a stratagem where on a six to hit, you do a mortal wound, and on a one to hit, you do a mortal wound to your own unit. So I'm going to throw 20 Poxwalkers at you, I'm going to swing 40 times. And I'm going to re-roll all of them, just hoping for sixes. I don't care what happens the rest of the combat. Oh, I killed three of my five-point models, yep. which I might save on a six. Yeah. I'm, I'm all and in. And th they might come back if I kill something. Yeah. And then you still have a stratagem once per game per unit that's, I roll 76s and on a three plus, I get a guy back. Uh, great. Like, And then you have... So you're gonna, Typhus is going to end up with that Warlord trait, which that Warlord trait is everyone within his Contagion range, which he adds three inches to his Contagion range, so turn one's four, and so on and so on. And then you have a spell that you can make it 12. Everyone with, who starts their movement in it takes a Mortal Wound on a roll of a four plus, or D3 Mortal Wounds on a six. Now you tie that in with the fact you're doing Mortal Wounds from your Poxwalkers. You have three or four stratagems that just do mortal wounds from characters. You have one that every time I kill a model, I deal a mortal wound in combat. You have one where I take a mortal wound, I'm going to do two D3 mortal wounds to a unit or D3 mortal wounds to a character. I have one that when I die, I'm going to, on a two through five, I do D3 mortal wounds, and on a six, I do... Actually, it might be just one mortal wound, and on a six, I do D3 mortal wounds. Then you have another one for every... And you can only do it once per guy with a relic. It blows up like a six inch. You still have the relic. It does like a six inch ore where it does mortal wounds. Mm -hmm. You don't have to shoot. Mm -hmm. You just do mortal wounds. Yeah. And then Typhus does mortal wounds. You just show up like stank. <laughs> <laughs> like not even casting spells. Oh, yeah. and then you have a sorcerer who just does mortal wounds if he casts above a seven. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. I think a lot of people, like I said, I uh, can't talk to you guys, but uh, a lot of these people that just dump their armies they are probably pissed yeah because 
they cut, they started seeing a little bit of this snippet, this, that, this, that. Oh, they're not going to be any good anymore. And I was like, no, there's no way they're going to make Death Guard suck. First Chaos book out of the box, they're going to yeah. be good. Uh, and, and they are. They pretty much made my uh, Sister Repentia, which were kind of... They're nasty. They're, they are nasty. That first turn, they're nasty. They, they went up on points, so you have a tough battle between them or the Zephyrin. But they're almost useless against Death Guard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they I mean, didn't do too hot. Because like, they do two damage. Oh, okay, cool. Now they do one damage. Yeah, that's true. So You can't just you, go over there and wipe a squad. And like then I really was would. basically killing them on twos. Yeah, uh, you made a lot of four-plus symbols there. <laughs> <laughs> the dice were in your favor. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I did like, I didn't even kill one on a charge of eight. That's that's crazy. Yeah, and I have rerolled a hit, and I have strength seven. Yeah, they're nasty. Yeah. They're, so the fact that you didn't, that's crazy. Like the week before, I played them against Ultramarines, and they took out a Outrider squad, a Chaplain yeah. on a bike. They should just be wiping people and off an the board. And Yeah. I mean, they are... They're one of the best solo units in the game, I think, like, right I was, now, for sure. I was about to buy a second one, but with Death Guard, I think they're going to be pretty heavy in the meta. Yeah. So I don't know if I'm getting the use. I think the Zephyrin are just going to be better for me. Uh I mean, my Zephyrin didn't do anything last night because it's the same thing that happened to you when my Zephyrin landed. Mm-hmm. My Zephyrin don't make that charge. Yeah, it's done. It's 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 done for them. Yeah, because yeah, I got to charge them. Because when they charge, the Zephyrin are just as mean. Mm-hmm. But if they don't charge, same thing. Oh, we kind of have armor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, we're going to be talking about uh, a really cool new thing coming up. Uh, we This is, uh, if you're watching, of course, uh, we have a photo up of a mock-up of what our new building is going to look like. Uh, we are very excited to announce that we are uh, expanding our retail area into an actual full-blown. I mean, we're going all in on retail uh, for 2021. And uh, so this is a uh, a spot here close to our mall, close to our shopping district. Uh, it's in a really good hot spot of town. Um, so the, we're going to be having full-blown uh, gaming area for all of our customers that are coming in. We're going to have a big retail spot. We're really excited. I mean, it's this is something we've never, we've when we had a different store, the Table's Edge in the past, we had something that was, you know, a full blown retail store. That's all we were, but it wasn't anything like this. Yeah, like what it, this I mean, is it was cool. At, it was cool for what the town had at the time. Yeah. So uh, Amarillo has never had a a, a, full, a comic store like what we're trying to do, a gaming store like what we're trying to do. We're gonna have two full on studios back there. Yep. One of them's going to have a be set up for uh, bat reports bat reps. yep uh we'll have bat reports we'll have our live cell room um it's this is really really epic we signed up for this on uh, monday we're going to have a couple months to uh get it all fixed up in the way we want uh and then um we're we're going to move it and we're going to hopefully start on uh, um dominating the retail area here mm-hmm. uh we're going to have toys we're going to have action figures we'll have comic books we'll have board games we'll have Tabletop games with miniatures. I mean, we're we're planning on carrying the full load of what we can. Um, we're like I said again, we're really really excited about this. So um, I don't know if you've seen the little mock up image that I had there. So I mean, what are your uh, thoughts? I'm excited. It yeah. looks like not seedy, like we don't sell drugs. So, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. <laughs> that, that's that's my favorite thing about going to a comic book store in any town. You're like. So where are we going? You just need to look for the seediest looking building. <laughs> yeah, and that's going to be where it's at. Yeah, and, and you know there. Uh, there are quite a few, like I said, we kind of got all over the place and Darren loves going to comic book stores, so we go to them all over the U.S. when we travel. And there's, you know, for the most part, yeah, you've got, okay, just because you're, I mean, in the most part, it's because you're a comic book store, so you need the cheapest rent possible to make it happen, right? So you're finding the the old strip malls, the old strip well, centers, like, you know, and that's where you're going. Even the famous, like, Midtown Comics is not actually on Times Square. No, it's a couple blocks it, away, like, yeah. And, like, you have the doors up a staircase in an alley. Yep. Yeah, it's <laughs> like we were at times where we're like, all right, we're, oh, we have to walk two more blocks back the way we just came to go back and find it. Yeah, and then yeah, you have to go. Now it looks great inside, but yeah, I mean, it's, from the outside, like yeah, you're, you're like, really wait, is that really it? <laughs> they like, do a good job with those photos online. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like even the Citadel, like yes, it's on the Main Street of Grapevine, which yeah, the rent's gonna be much, but I was expecting like you know their store that they have in Nottingham. Yeah, yeah. Warhammer yeah. World. Warhammer World. I was expecting that, and like don't get me wrong, Citadel's great. They yeah. have a great setup. They have great employees. They have if you you're in Grapevine, I suggest go seeing yeah. it. It's in the old uh, the old uh, district there. I can't remember what it's called. The historic district. In yeah, Grapevine. It's, it's downtown Grapevine. Yeah, main, main, main Street there. It's, yeah, I recommend it. But like, 
I wasn't what I expected. I thought the front would be like I was, you know, I was expecting something a lot bigger. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it's still huge for an a actual Games Workshop store. It's just Games but Workshop. But if you right. and I don't know if you've ever been to a Battle Bunker, you probably never have. The Battle Bunkers battle bunker. were huge. They were twice the size of what that was. Really? Yeah. Okay. So they the one we went to in L.A. was humongous. And they don't have those anymore. You know, mm-hmm. sadly, they went down to just their GW stores, and I think this Citadel. Yeah, is the I've only been thing I've me. been to a GW store, and they're like teeny tiny. Yeah, it's just cram as much crap in here as you can, uh-huh. and they have a couple demo. But now the the those things are there to help make sure they get people in local stores. You know, they want you to play at your local gaming store. But I mean, it is it's pretty cool to see that Citadel. We went to this last weekend, so oh, it's it's a great little store. Like Dallas has a great community in general. Yeah, like, even their other stores. Uh, Love to see that here. Yeah. Uh, Amarillo, for whatever reason, we've had trouble keeping solid gaming groups the entire time. We had Table's Edge at its prime. Mm-hmm. Had probably two solid years. I mean, three if you count the time we were kind of like a club at Darren's other company. Yeah. Uh, but gamers in general are kind of flaky, so it takes a lot. And yep. You need a solid store, and this, I think, will go a long way to getting us. Yeah, so we've got 12,500 uh, yeah. square feet. Table's Edge was at its max 5,000. Yeah. So we're talking two and a half times the space of what we had there, and that was a what felt like a huge store. Because, you right? know, the store itself makes a huge difference mm-hmm. because we're all nerds. We're mostly introverts. Yeah. and I, We and don't want to be hanging out somewhere that we're not comfortable. We, we yeah. want people to be... Okay, yeah, cool. I feel I feel like I can come in here and play and not have to fit in with those guys or these guys because we, you know, we right. don't want to be that. You know, we'll have to tell Stetson to calm down and quit yelling at the noobs. I'm just kidding. He actually does a great job with helping people learn the game, which I really do appreciate. So, like uh, in Lubbock, you have Stormcrow Games, and that store is not going to be that big, but it makes a huge difference to their community. Yeah, like their community was dying as Challenge Games stopped caring as much, mm-hmm. and he stepped in. And Storm Pro makes all the difference. They have a solid community. And this is what I think we're going to have here. I'm super excited about this just from seeing the mock up there. Mm-hmm. That looks like somewhere you want to walk into yeah. without looking around to see who who's watching you walk into yeah. there. Well, and you know, that's part of the goal, too. It's in a better location. It looks like somewhere you want to walk into. So we want to attract all these people that aren't nerds and turn them into nerds. Uh, they're yeah. nerds. They just don't know it yet. Yeah. <laughs> Cor- correction. I think, yeah. The more and more you get to know people, you're like, wait, yeah, you're a nerd. You just yeah. dork. You, did, yeah. <laughs> you didn't realize what you were nerdy about. Yeah. Uh, we will say that when you walk in the store. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we plan on making it look great. We've already gotten um, kind of the interior, kind of figured out what we want. It's pretty wide open right now. We're going to do a little bit of walls here and there. But for the most part, it's going to be pretty open. Uh, really good uh, space for games, uh, tabletop games. Uh, we've got uh, a, a big old corner of the room already kind of carved out for all the uh, role-playing games, miniatures, paints, all that kind of stuff. Of course, comic books and then toys, T-shirts, that kind of jazz as and well. Like, uh, what's going to set us apart from other local stores and kind of put us on Citadel status is everything's going to be finished looking. It's not going to be ramshackled together. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we're we're we want this to look. I mean, even though we are local, just here in Amarillo, we want this to look like when you walk in. It's a, it's something you would see. You know, from a, a huge big company you you're know, not like, going to see a bunch of foam board buildings that aren't painted yeah. sitting all over the table so. plus you might actually run into me so double plus <laughs> <You're> welcome <laughs> well and that, that is true we want it to be a destination where people want to stop and say hey you know i want to i want to go in there i want to check it out i want to see this when i drive through Amarillo or whatever you know so we want that and i think we're going to try to get our, do our best to make sure that that is what a destination people want to come and see so it'd be really cool we're really excited about it um and, and i can't we, april 1st is our Hopeful uh, opening date, April 1st, 2021. It's not an April Fool's joke. Nope. Nope. Uh, that's just when we have to start paying the money. So they <laughs> have to kind of be open that day. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we're really excited about that. We can't wait. Um, uh, let's we'll say we signed paperwork, paperwork on Monday. They're going to give us a couple months to kind of get it all set up. And then um, yeah, said April 1st, we're going to be the, the the new retail space of uh, local area for uh, Amarillo and the, the surrounding areas. So, uh, there's nothing really between us and Lubbock, uh, 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 nothing between us and Albuquerque, Oklahoma City, Denver, and then, of course, uh, outside of Lubbock, you got to go all the way to Dallas to find another big game, so, uh, or a big store. So it's going to be really exciting to be something like that here for Even this area. Albuquerque is kind of hard sometimes. Yeah. There, there's are 
they're not easy to find on the internet. Yeah. And like their one really good looking store isn't really big into gaming. Yeah. It's mostly comics there. Yeah. And, and, so I, I, and you know, you've got some other kind of things in Arizona, you know, things like that. But I mean, there's just a long way to go before you find another good place like this. So uh, we're hoping we can be a, a good travel destination, a good stop for our local people. Uh, and then we'll be able to build a group pretty good sized community again here mm-hmm. in Amarillo. So, uh, and some of the stuff we want to do, like Tanner was talking about, uh, we'll have a couple of studios back there. So, uh, and we're going to be putting a lot more stuff on YouTube. So, so uh, please we kind of wanted to hit that a little bit as well. Comment on what you'd like to see. Like, yeah. I feel like, I mean, I'm not officially a part of some of this company, but I feel like we want to cater to you. What would you like to see? Would you want to see battle reports? Do you want to see us building minis, doing mm-hmm. unboxing, painting? Yep. Or yes. like, uh, or even, a, yeah, we're still a new channel, so we'll cater to the content you want to see. Like yeah. list reviews, you want to? We could do that. Like go over a list a week. Like <laughs> we're not perfect. We might tell you something's terrible. And it actually works great. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I, I would like to see this channel go different places. I mean, yeah. we definitely want to be pretty diverse, and I think that's you know what we can work on as uh, as far as seeing uh, what we're going to put out content wise. So I think we're really going to try really hard to do that. So. So make sure you like and subscribe. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yo, 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 like and subscribe. Get into the channel right now. Let's get to three digits, maybe four digits on those subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, appreciate everybody guys joining. I'm going to tell you about our, our, where you can find us. So uh, look for us on Facebook at Unknown Comic Books, uh, on Instagram at Unknown Comic Books. Of course, you can find uh, all the stuff we're talking about as far as models, comic books, all that kind of stuff. You can uh, find that stuff on our website, unknowncomicbooks.com. Uh, and then of course, uh, podcast that uh, eventually this will be uploaded to a podcast so you can subscribe to, you know, all your favorite channels, audible, um, I, iTunes, and then of course Spotify. So as soon as we get to a thousand likes, we're going to do a giveaway. <laughs> that, that probably will be true. Thanks for, uh, thanks for throwing that out there, Stetson. Just making sure. <laughs> Stetson's like, it better be me. <laughs> all right. Anything we'll else, Tanner? We're going to give away one of Stetson's armies. That's fair. No, <laughs> He's got some to spare. I have some to spare. <laughs> so I mean, I might actually do that. If we get to 1,000 likes, I will put up a painted mini. Good painted mini, not by me. Yeah, he not, knows a lady. You, or two. Yeah, I mean, I will, I will put up something if we get to 1,000 likes. Yeah. There we go. That's you awesome. heard it here first. Yep. All right. Well, uh, I call on my phone now, guys? You can't reach me. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, I'll let Tanner take us out. All right. Thank you, guys. And uh, we'll have this up. Uh, Be sure to keep on the lookout for more content on both this channel and our Unknown Comics channel. Uh, Subscribe to both of those, and we'll see you all next week. Later.